Snapper, you want a cuteness overload this morning? Get under this, get under this. We uh, picked up Julian's puppy yesterday. He is fucking cute. Snapper. Hey, we're doing a mini lesson in the next 20 minutes, I'd say. It's gonna be a question of the day number seven. It's a good one today. Question of the day number seven. Someone actually just pointed out that it's probably number eight because I did a little one in between, but I didn't save it. It's not in the thing, it's not going on the YouTube. So it's number seven. By the way, before I front load this Snapchat for the next 24 hours, and I want to actually bloody clicks through, watches the whole thing, a couple of big announcements. This is a big, uh, lots of ha things happening this week. This week, two of my friends are launching their own businesses. One of them is Benny's Swiss Watch Company. If you want a high-end Swiss-made watch without spending 10 grand, get to this site. My friend Josh starts his business today. Best of luck, dude. It's going to be epic. It's going to be awesome. It's a garage door business. It's a physical with a ute in the truck. It's a proper physical business uh, servicing real estate. And my beautiful girlfriend Robin's second book goes on pre-sale this week sometime. I don't know which day, but it's this week. We've seen the thing. It looks awesome. Also, it's Jordan's birthday today. Happy birthday, Jordan. Jordan's the bloody head marketer of Infinite Prosperity. Question of the day number seven. How do you deal with haters, naysayers, challengers, bullies? This is the best answer that you're ever going to get in five minutes. <laughs> if there is someone who has explained how to deal with a hater or a bully better than this in five minutes online somewhere, and you can send me the link, send me the link because I want to learn. Step one, self-reflection. Self-reflect. When you get a bully, when you get a naysayer, when you get a hater, when you get someone who's challenging you, self-reflect. Ask yourself this question. Why do I care what some other person says about me, thinks about me, believes about me? <laughs> it's a trick question. I'll tell you why you care. You care what people think because a part of you subordinates to a part of them. Or all of you subordinates to all of them. You only care about the opinions of the people that you look up to and you self-minimize in comparison to. You don't care about the... The people really below you, you don't care what they say. Let me prove it. Let me give you an example. I'm going to explain a person that uh, I'm using social idealisms of what the majority of human beings don't aspire to be like. And through creating this made up person, it will show you that you really wouldn't care what the, this kind of person would think. Here we go. Picture this person in your mind. He's the guy. He's the guy. He's a short, he's a rapist. He's in jail. He's all fucked up. He's poor, he's sickly, he's depressed, he's got nothing going for him. He's on welfare. Always has been, always will be. When he gets out of the jail for raping the, the little girl that he raped, he'll be on welfare, he'll be sniffing paint and taking drugs. He stinks, he's got no teeth, he's a mess. He comes up to you and he says, this shit you're doing, this business, it's bullshit. He gets up in your face and you can smell him and you, and you feel distaste for him. And he says, you're going to lose. You don't have what it takes. You're a loser. But what do you think when someone like that comes up and gives you, bullies you, gives you challenge, gives you hate, becomes a naysayer? You think, fuck off, peasant. <laughs> Get the fuck out of my face before I fucking kill you. You don't give a fuck what he says. You don't care because you don't subordinate to him. You resent the guy. You only get offended, you only lodge the opinions of others if you're looking up to them, if you're infatuated with them. If you look down at someone, you don't care, it just bounces straight off. So the first thing you ever want to do is when you get the hate, when you get the naysayer, if it doesn't bounce straight off you and you just, you don't even give it any thought, then you, it's getting lodged somewhere. It's getting stored as a charge, as a reminder to say, hey, look into this situation more. There's something about this particular person or this particular group that you're looking up to. And for the duration that you're looking up to them, you'll never be able to transcend them. You'll never be able to influence them from the top down because you'll be always subordinating from the bottom up. Look into it. When you get the hate that affects you, when, it's, when it sticks, you're like, ooh, that hurt. Look into it. You're subordinating to them. It's an invitation to transcend that. Step two, once you've figured out where you've subordinated to the person or looked up to someone or put them on the pedestal in the area and you care about their opinion and it's stored, step two is to empower yourself. Use your bullies, use the haters as a leveraging tool to empower yourself further. When the kid in school, the fat kid who gets bullied, he will go to his mom, he'll go to the teachers, and he'll go to the bloody people in the charge, and they'll victimize the bully, and they'll put him in trouble, and they'll praise the fat kid. Try and artificially inflate his damaged ego. It's weak. It's weak. Empower the kid. Get him into martial arts class and empower him. If you're getting bullied financially, and you go and empower your finances, become financially independent. You don't get bullied anymore. The bullies don't show up. 
if you're getting bullied physically in your domestic violence or in a buddy at the kid in school, you empower yourself physically and you learn to hold your own, you won't get bullied anymore. If you're getting bullied emotionally, and you go and empower your mindset and your wisdom and you understand the balance of the universe and you break your fantasies, you won't get bullied. Every single time, that every single case that I've ever worked with, 100% of the time, you empower the area that you're being bullied in, the bully just disappears. They don't show up. And for the people who were in power the whole time, the bullies never showed up. And so that brings me to this conclusion. You are not the victim of your bully, of your hater, of your naysayer. They are blessings for you. They are blessings being given to you to wake you up to where you're weak. When you use them and you say, oh, I've been weak in this area, I've subordinated to this person, you go and empower that area and transcend it, you can only be grateful for your bully. If you're being bullied, figure out why, self-reflect, go and empower yourself in that area, transcend it, until the point where the bullying dissolves away, it will just disappear. And then when you're empowered to the degree that the bully is empowered, or beyond, Go to them and say, thank you. Thank you for waking me up to where I was falling short. You were the one person or one of the two people or one of the few people who actually believe that I had the strength and courage enough to be challenged in that area so that I could grow. All these other soft cocks around me didn't believe in me. My mom thought I was a weak little peasant pussy and she didn't challenge me. All the, all the love and all the support. Do not be a victim to your bullies. They are your blessings. They are the people who will teach you the most and, and empower you and grow you the most on planet Earth. And when you receive the message without judgment and you act on it and you go and empower yourself and you transcend the bully and you become thankful and grateful and loving and present with the bully, well then you started the master life. That's the mastery of life. Seeing the balance, the order and the love in the universe. It's everywhere, all the time, every place. If any of you guys have an experience uh, doing this over the next year or something, please let me know. Give me feedback. You guys did the girlfriend thing, resol resolving your ex. And I've already had 20, 30 people who went and after that lesson went and resolved their shit with their ex. And, and seeing that come through, that was, that was really meaningful to me. I was really moving. You big bullies are your big teachers. Now, before I finish this lesson, I want to talk about not the big bullies, not the ones that are really affecting your life, but just the little niggly ones. As you go through the ranks of life, and you move up in the world in leadership, in success, in results, in fame and fortune. You're always going to have the niggling naysayers, the guys who are keeping you in check. They're the ones talking about you at the dinner parties and, and bloody gossiping and all this kind of stuff. They'll always be there. They'll always be there to offset the people who are infatuating with you in your growing fame, success and fortune. Always watch for the pride before the fall. When you get too elated with yourself, when you get too up in your head and too cocky and, and too proud, you will attract into your life a humbling circumstance to bring you back to balance. We're not here to be elated and proud and self-righteous. We're not here to be uh, self-minimizing and self-deprecating. We're here to be balanced and present with love. That's it. That's the, that's the order of the universe. So niggling naysayers are beautiful tools for that. Um, sometimes I have a week where I make a, a lot of money. And then I got, the, I got the car, I got the house, I got my dream girl. I've, I got people infatuated with me. It's wise, and Rob and I have this chat at breakfast and at dinner, it's wise not to get out of control with pride. Uh, we always look for the balance. I always ask myself, where am I getting the challenge? Where have I fucked up? Where have I been rude? And this, when I balance them out, I get back to humility and it allows you to be humble. If you don't take control of your emotions yourself and you don't get yourself back to balance and humility and presence, you, the outside world will attract into your life a cataclysmic event to do it for you. So, having hundreds of, of naysayers, little niggling naysayers that just give you a little chip away at the challenge and, and pull you back into humility, they're perfect tools for that. And when you know the order of the universe, you can't judge that, can you? It's, you, you all you can say is, thank you, I love you. Thank you for the, talking about me at your dinner table. <laughs> it is funny though, when one of my friends go to a, sort of a more distant friends and they go out to dinner and they're talking about me at their dinner table about all the things I'm doing and not doing. I wish I could say the same that I talk about, the, talk about them, but uh, I'm, I'm busy, I'm doing shit. I'm focusing on what I want for my life. But I always thank the nigglies. You've got to thank the niggly haters because they're the ones who are constantly keeping you in check, keeping you in balance so that you don't attract a cataclysmic event to, to balance you out. Okay, lesson's over. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And this one, will, yes, it will be on the second YouTube channel. Here's the link. YouTube.com forward slash Lewis Mocker Snaps.